it's really good to see Manuela here. She's an old friend. She's a native Folignate, as we'd say. Hello. And we're standing in front of the Duomo. Yep. And she speaks excellent English, so I want to ask her a question in English. Manuela, in my opinion, and I'm happy to do this presentation on Foligno because my clients booking tours are requesting Spoleto, Assisi, Perugia, Deruta, Orvieto before they're ever suggesting Foligno. Is Foligno coming alive again or? Well, I, I think, yeah, Foligno is, uh, is actually not uh, well known as a tourist town. It's more right. known as the uh, market town. No, a market it's, town. It's the center of, of the valley. So everybody comes here for shopping. shopping. Right. And it was um, somewhat decrepit because since it was on the plain, since it had um, some industry that was uh, uh, related to uh, warfare and also the other hub, the, the train, train hub, depot, it yes. got uh, heavily bombed. Heavily unlike bombed in the war. Asisi, unlike Bevania, unlike the other small towns. And a lot of that had never been fixed. Right. But um, we had the earthquake of 97 when Italy still had some money to spare, um, which actually helped the town a lot because many people got uh, uh, subsidies and, and uh, got funding for, funding restoration. for restoration. And so places that uh, I remembered as a, a child being more. Uh, really uh, half destroyed and half left to, uh, to go, they were all fixed up. Was well, this building behind us restored also? This is City Hall here, um, all these well, buildings? Um, the, the City Hall, yes, because the earthquake actually caused the, 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 the tower. That bell tower up there wobbled in the earthquake. The bell tower yeah, wobbled yeah. and it's since been restored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was restored. It but almost that, came down. But other than that, the, the structural damage on the, on the, on the city hall was not even so visible. It was right. there, but, but no, what really got restored was the, uh, uh, not the public policy so much, but the uh, private homes. The private homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. so things are back to a good level yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I think we are seeing better times. So, and so forward Foligno, the undiscovered gem of Umbria. We're going to discover more of it. the Church of Santa Maria Infraportes of Foligno. It is the oldest basilica in Foligno. Documents dated to at least the 11th century, all the way up to the 13th century, there was work on this building. And unfortunately, in what we would call unhappy restoration in the 19th century, they took out the rose window and they replaced it with this bipartite window up here called the B Fore. These women are walking along. This is the town of bicycles, let me tell you, Foligno, because it's flat. They did save the splendid medieval columns. The columns might date from the 11th to 12th century. It's a windy day in Foligno. You might hear wind in the background. Now let's go up towards the door here. Beautiful capital sculpted in local limestone, one here, look at the one over there, which is kind of ionic. And over the door, we have remnants probably from the Middle Ages, uh, probably not Roman. Let's go in. We're inside Santa Maria Infraportes, inside the walls. The name probably is given to the church after the 13th century when they redo the walls of the medieval city of Foligno. And we're going to go up and see a couple of interesting frescoes. You can see that the church was greatly restored. Nothing really left is left of its beautiful 12th century, 11th century, 13th century edifice. But there are some gems still on the walls. This is by a famous um, Foligno painter, Niccolo Alunno. This is Christ carrying his cross, 15th century. And aren't we lucky that it still remains? Let's go see a couple more frescoes by him. And this is another fresco by Niccolo Alunno. And this is an image of St. Peter the Martyr. He's always depicted with the knives, the huge uh, sharp knife slitting open his head. And in this fresco of uh, St. Lucy, we can see her eyes on a plate. She was martyred under the reign of Diocletian in Sicily in the fourth century AD. Her eyes on a plate are the iconographic symbol of St. Lucy. 
And next to her, we have an unusual saint that you may never have heard of, and I hadn't before I came to visit this church, Foligno, the city of surprises. This is Santa Mico, Saint Friend. And he was an 11th century Benedictine, we can see by his habit, who lived in an abbey in the Marches region, which is to the east of us. His iconographic symbol is the wolf, but the wolf with a saddle on it, the wooden saddle usually on a donkey. Why is it? The wolf was about to attack the asino or the donkey that the Benedictine friars used to carry their firewood and so forth, and he tamed the wolf. He tamed him so successfully that the wolf was substituted for the donkey as the animal to bear burdens for the friars. And by Pier Antonio Mesastris, right near the altar area, Saint Jerome being crowned by angels, one of the four doctors of the church. And the other fresco is Catherine of Alexandria. We remember that her martyrdom was <laughs> enacted in this way. She was drawn and quartered on the wheel. So you always see a wheel in images of St. Catherine of Alexandria. Time to go. I we can hear the bells ringing of the church, but I'd like to mention this uh, fresco here by Ugolino di Gisberto. And he's a local painter of the Foligno school, shall we say, 16th century. But let's look at the Virgin and Child. She's flanked by John the Baptist here on the left, by an unknown saint on her right. But let's look at the Christ Child. He's wearing coral beads, the red beads. Could be a foreshadowing of the blood he'll shed in his death. But some people like to assume that they're keeping away the evil eye, keeping away the malocchio. If you wear a coral, you'll have good luck and no one can put the evil eye on you. So interestingly, here's the Christ child needing to be protected against the evil eye for someone who might be envious of him. And above the Christ child is the Lamb of God fresco in the vault. Clotilde has been a sister for nearly 60 years and she's here in the Franciscan Monastery of Santana Foligno and she's very, you can hear the bells ringing, she's very kindly showing us the great frescoes by Pier Antonio Mezzastris who was a Foligno painter and he's painting at the end of the 15th century and this is Francis receiving the stigma with Frate Leone. Frate Leone e San Francesco a, a Laverna a in Toscana. A Laverna in Toscana. Anche questo è interessante perché Sant'Anna è la figura grande, no? Con il manto verde, benedice la Beata Angelina. And here is Sant'Anna blessing the blessed Angelina Angelina. of Foligno. Sì. E Santa Elisabetta di Ungheria che è la patrona delle terziarie francescane, sì. prega, cioè sta, in fondo è un po' la vocazione di Angelina. And this no? is Saint Elizabeth of Hungary praying, and she's the patron saint of the Franciscan tertiaries. She was a noble, she was a queen, there's Saint Elizabeth up there. She was noble, she was a queen, and she gives up her wealth to follow Francis. She was in the Franciscan spirit. And here we have Virgin Saints and Martyr Saints. And this is a Vescovo or Bishop of Foligno, San Feliciano, who's patron saint of the city, martyred in the 4th century AD. Room of the painters now, and they practiced on this wall, and this is absolutely extraordinary. This is uh, open to the public only if you give a t telephone call to the sisters of the Monastero di Sant'Anna. And the artist practiced here. This is a profile of the artist Nicolò Alunno, and this is his wife Caterina. This is his father-in-law. And you can even see the coins of the time. And you can even see a nude here. And so this was the wall that the artist practiced on. And sister said it was the warmest wall, the warmest room, because the fireplace was here. And we even have a fresco above the door 
Ti chiede la fresco sopra la porta? Sempre, sempre Niccolò. Niccolò. Oh, so Niccolò alunno, end of the 15th century, his fresco. Questo, siccome era rimasto mutilo, era stato coperto. Qui è stato a bisturi, è stato tolto tutto il, il tinteggio. Sì. Quindi è stato un restauro che ha richiesto tanta cura e tanto tempo so e tanti this soldi. Era coperto di colori. Sì, di this colori. was all covered with different um, painted colors mm -hmm. and this as well and it was been uncovered so you could see the designs below. She said an enormous work. Sì. Fu aperta al pubblico quando questo? E in 2005, 2004. Maybe as of about 2004 you could come in and visit. Grazie. With the flowers, La Donna del Fiore. And sisters telling me she's as beautiful as a maiden of Botticelli. Look at how beautiful she is and how elegant. This again was a sketch of one of the artists who were, was practicing on this wall, covered with treasures this wall was.